I would like also to thank uh, Professor Larrell for inviting me, also the audience for showing up in such a cold uh, winter and during the spring break for the uh, scholars and students. I wish we would have this harsh winter in California as well as such a warm uh, circle of people interested in Central Asia and Tajikistan. What's Alice? <laughs> That's the opposite there. So uh, I'm taking the advantage then. So this, uh, this presentation is mostly based on my uh, PhD dissertation. Here, I, it has two sections. The first uh, section is more conceptual, and uh, in order for me to get to the more ethnographic and anthropological uh, fieldwork uh, that I did in Russia, I need to open the question of theology and geography, which is also a bit strange to talk about geography at the same time in the framework of uh, theology. So, I mean, geography, everybody, we are very familiar with the way that the GPS world location, territory, land, landscape. But theology, of course, there are some abstract uh, concepts here, especially in our secular society. So uh, theodicy, soteriology, eschatology, they are very abstract, and I'm not getting into the scholarship on that at all. So I'm trying to make it more presentable and just more concrete so that we can follow go to the second uh, section on eth uh, ethnography of uh, migrant mosques in uh, Russia. But, and by migrant mosques, I don't, a Tajik migrant mosque, I don't mean that these are Tajik mosques at all. By Tajik migrant mosque, I mean those ones that have a significantly um, number of Tajik migrant laborers frequenting their, uh, socializing their, praying there, and in some cases, some very interesting cases, the Khatib, the Imam Khatib is, the, or the leader of the Friday prayer, is Tajik. So that's my idea of uh, Tajik migrant uh, mosque. Otherwise, there is no nationality based or language based uh, on Tajik or Tajiki. Yeah. So, okay, so the, starting with the heart, so the geography thing is easy, we will deal with it later. But starting with the hard part, theodicy uh, as landscape on Earth. So, uh, let's just, okay. I think I missed one uh, present. So theodicy, one of the questions that is asked in uh, uh, the language of theology is that what happens on Earth, especially if that's evil, there should be an answer to it. Why God is making such evil and uh, terrible events, destructions, death, disease, pain possible on earth? And that is the question that we call in Christian uh, terminology, theodicy. In uh, Islam too, in most monotheistic uh, religions too, the uh, uh, question of evil is very much at the heart of theology. And uh, when I'm just to make it a, a daily example that is beyond just believing in a monotheistic religion. For example, if God forbid something bad happens to you if you are diagnosed with a terminal illness and uh, all, all of a sudden your daily work, daily uh, framework of making your life meaningful is lost, you will start to ask why this happened to me, how is this happened to me, why should I be subjected to such a terrible disease, I will go on the internet, I will try to get some solutions, hope, this and that. And uh, so starting a question, a big question that would lead you to some kind of knowledge, learning about your daily environment, and then making an action based on, it, based on it. So migration here for me is situated in the framework of theology and theodicy, as diagnosing where I am, what, what should I do, what does that mean for me, and then the action of migration happens. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I will, I will bring, uh, so theodicy as landscape on earth, horizontality, of divine event, these are very abstract, uh, I know, but, but what is happening, where, why, what it means for me, what am I to do, is both uh, common for us, secular subjects, and also for other non-secular subjects, even not if Muslim or Islamic. I'm gonna give you a close now reading of the file, of the criminal file, uh, criminal complaint file in the uh, Federal District Court of New York uh, three weeks ago, uh, regarding the three Central Asians that were nabbed by FBI and uh, and they were accused of planning to go to uh, to Syria and to the ISIS uh, territory to fight. So I'm, I'm trying to give you also how this is also related to the question of migration in today's political atmosphere. And so they, and this is part of the quote, is part of the criminal file, and it's on the internet. The, invest the investigation has revealed that the defendants Abdul Rasul uh, Jurabayev and Ahrar uh, Saeed Ahmadov expressed their interest in traveling to ISIL controlled territories in order to wage violent jihad. So basically in our understanding of someone who travels to ISIL 
controlled territories is that there is a reason, there is a goal, and that is in order to wage war and jihad. So in order to I put it in Italy's, this is the dominant way of thinking about migration. Traveling. Traveling has a goal. The goal is if you travel to America to have a better life, if you travel, you are, you're going to win jihad. But traveling itself, migrating itself, leaving the land itself, doesn't have any meaning normally in our dominant way of theorizing. So migration by itself is not an act. Be it theological, be it secular, be it financial, there is not much discussion on what does migration mean in those contexts. So now, but at the same time, so the, the data that the that the, the, the that was recorded or intercepted is also interesting, but that's a diagnosis. That's a dominant way that the, on the media in the criminal uh, discourse we use. That, and, but then the, the, the data that we are here is that on or about February 9, 2015, Said Ahmadov is part of the, their conversation, not the whole file. The whole file is not too long for here. Called his mother in a recorded conversation to ask for his passport. When asked where he wanted to go, Said Ahmadov responded that. If a person has a chance to join Islamic State and does not go there, on judgment day he will be asked why, and that it is a sin to live in the land of infidels. After Sayyid Ahmad continued to ask for his passport, his mother hung up the phone. So the whole, the whole question of, I, I, I am under a duty, religious duty, to leave this land and join another land, is by itself has theological implications and meaning, in, not just uh, that, so I would disagree with that FBI agent who puts it as in the complex belief that they are traveling to ISI in order to. I mean, uh, the best way, the most accurate way to say this would be they, they intended to travel to ISIS and even if they wanted to accuse them of waging jihad uh, beforehandedly, so to wage jihad. So in order to, it's just flattening the whole uh, picture of migration, the theological implication and meaning of migration. It just flattens it to a goal of waging jihad. And then we would ask, oh, why Islam is so violent, or why these people are the minorities, though, but st still in the language of Islam. So the language of Islam that I'm trying to excavate here is the language of migration and theology of migration. Oh, and there is also more uh, more of the conversation here. So one of the, so that was the, so the previous one was, uh, was the Ahrar Saeed Ahmedov. The second one, uh, so there were three people that were accused. So the second people, uh, Jurabayev also, uh, he was intercepted talking with someone with the idea of Baghdadi. Is it the same famous Baghdadi, famous Baghdadi, ISIS or not? I don't know, but uh, it's in the complaint point. And so the person from the administration of the ISIL were trying to convince him to come and wage jihad as you see Baghdadi. Even the caliph himself is doing jihad. How come you are not coming here or is not jihad for you? And then, uh, then they, he recites some hadith that it is obligatory for you to come. It's now individual obligatory. Fard kefaya now. So, and Fard Aina. So, Jurawif uh, responds back that can you provide me with fatwa to my circumstances? Fatwa is the Arabic name for uh, Islamic. Uh, uh, jurisprudence decree, a religious decree. So an uh, official religious decree in my circumstances. Why? Why, why would this, this guy who wants to go wage jihad against the United States, against whoever needs a fatwa to go there? Already he has set his mind, he's, he, he knows that violence is the answer, this and that. And But let, let's take a look at the answer, at least the first part of the answer is very interesting. For first, I'm in the land of infidels. If right now I decide to go to the airport and go anywhere except for Uzbekistan, they may arrest me. So the whole, the whole idea of this is just a means to get there, that's not true. This guy needs a theological understanding of the route that he has to take in order to get to the Syria. It's not just that he just wants to go there and uh, become a jihadist. He wants to think of his moving too as a theological, as an understanding of his religious duty. So in order to do that, all these uh, problems that he will have because he's under the FBI radar and he knows that he can't get out like his uh, friend that his mother had confiscated uh, his passport he needs to understand what this complicated situation the security situation that wouldn't let him get out of the country and to in order to wage a hard whatever is having kind of a religious and theological meaning for him what is what is he to do here what 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 ha, what does that what does it mean for his limitations, for his responsibility? Can he be responsible to God in the afterlife? 
can be just justifies circumstances. So he's asking for uh, fatwa in order to justify circumstance. So now let's go to the uh, ISIS uh, fatwas regarding migration. And this is uh, by the website Jihadika, maintained at Johns Hopkins. I have no relation to ISIS either. So many disclaimers today for scholarly uh, talks, unfortunately. Anyways. So this is the, from the Hayatul Bukusul Efta, the Council for Debates and Fatwas. Efta is the plural for fatwa. And uh, there are many interesting, many interesting fatwas there. And unfortunately, the, the people who are gathering, the scholars who are gathering this are just putting an English summary of the whole fatwa. They are not showing the theological reasoning and the chain of uh, references. It's not. Uh, and this one is about the, so the soil, the, Question is that some of the some of the women of the martyrs of the jihadis that have been died or may die, they want to take their children, especially Abna, their sons, out of the territory of Isaiah. Is it okay to do that? Should we help them or not? And then the the response is very much towards the same thing that the first person that I find uh, that the that in the file I quoted is saying. That in the, this is a very famous also Quranic verse says that indeed, so this is the verse that the uh, ISIS fatwa people are giving as an answer and putting on their websites and then uh, here translated on the Jihadika, but not completely in this form. So I put the, put the whole translation here. Indeed, those whom the angels take in death while wronging themselves, the angels will say, in what condition were you? So they have, when you are, when you, are, you have died and then the angels come to take your soul to the judgment day, they ask you in what condition were you on earth? Those people would say, we were oppressed in the land. The angels would say, was not the earth of Allah spacious enough for you to emigrate therein? For those, their refuge is hell and evil, it's as a destination. So this is now getting into the geo geography of who would be saved who would not be saved, and what is the duty of a Muslim to leave a land, to stay in a new land, to find a new land or not. So far, this is just a Quranic verse, it's accurate. But then we have to move also to the next, so this, is, this, this Quranic verse is not talking at all about jihad. It's just saying that if you feel oppressed, you have to go find another earth. So the earth of Allah is spacious enough for you to emigrate there. But then they move, they don't finish here. So they move to a, a hadith or prophetic saying that says, I abjure from all Muslims residing among the most visible of the apostates. So they are trying to say that this land that you are right now living in is also part of the land that you have to leave and put behind. And so that person who is a uh, famous uh, uh, Hadith uh, collector says that I abjure from all Muslims residing among the most visible of the apostates. The second one is by a Yemeni uh, scholar, Shukani contemporary and kind of well known. Says that in this there is reason, in this he means by that ayah, by the verse that I mentioned before, in this there is reason for sanctioning residing with apostates and for the obligation to distance from them. If the son of a soldier of God, the merciful, becomes subjected to the rule of the oppressor, that soldier will become the soldier of Satan, and God knows better. So if, even if the women take their sons out of the ISIL uh, territory, even that uh, uh, son's father, even if he's a mujahid, he has, uh, he has put his life for the, for the jihad, for God, his son would become, uh, because of his son living abroad and in the land of infidel, he himself in the afterlife, just imagine that this, if when your son is on this earth, if you are on the other world, in the other world, if your son goes to the land of the infidel and gets some kind of subsistence, Aish, or uh, daily subsistence, he will be, the father will be transformed to a soldier of Satan instead of God. So this is a ISIS thing. And uh, this is completely, uh, completely, uh, in a sense, uh, staged and uh, manipulated. But because when we go to that, the same ayah, we continue it in the Quran, and I went there to see what is, what is uh, the next ayah after that. Is there an ayah for leaving the land to wage jihad or not? And this was the, this was the, the continuation of the same ayah, the same surah. So, first of all, you, ha you need to leave the that land of oppressed because the earth of God, the earth of God is infinite. First of all, if you can't, God will 
God will uh, actually pardon you, except for the oppressed among men, women and children who cannot devise a plan, nor are they directed to a way. So if you are confused or if you can't leave, you will be pardoned. That's the first thing. And that's not even said in that, uh, in that uh, uh, ISIS uh, fatwa. The second thing is right after that uh, Quranic ayah is that and whoever emigrates for the cause of Allah will find on the earth many locations and abundances. So the question is that the, the earth, when you, it's in, infinite, and we, you, you know that you are located on a place that you feel oppressed, and everywhere, everywhere around you are apostates, and you have the duty to leave. That does not mean that you have the duty to leave and join, for example, a state, or Islamic state, or whatever state you think. God is saying that there's so many places on the land that you can start, and there's an abundance of life, or whatever that you need in order to live in a dutiful way. So that's also completely left. And the third, the most important thing, is that whoever leaves his home as an emigrant to Allah and his messenger, and then death overtakes him, his reward has already become incumbent upon Allah. It means that leaving and migrating is more important even than death or violent jihad. And if death comes and takes you over, God will actually pardon you and will reward you. But leaving is more important than leaving for something. The very action of leaving is theologically superior to any other goals that comes after it. So that, that shows that how our understanding of people leave for a thing is not completely accurate. The leaving itself now needs to be analyzed. And the leaving itself has like theological and uh, uh, satirological. Satirological in the meaning of that it will save me from the hell. It will save me from punishment. It will save me from the wrath of God. Uh, Implications. Analyze for every program. Okay. So this was the first part. Uh, I don't know if we have. How much time I have? Finish, huh? Oh, sorry. Okay. So, no, just, just a, 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 okay. so this is one of the masks that I studied. The, the logo there was on the website till recently. It is a huge, huge mosque. They wanted really to build that. And the neighborhood, they were freaking out. The city didn't give them the permission, of course. And then I did uh, find out that this actually belongs to the Ahmad al-Sabah uh, Islamic Center in Kuwait City. And it, they just uh, copied there and wanted to do it. This is the real mosque here. You can see it was a barracks for soldiers. And then the people started to cut the trees and to start cleaning it up and then the, still the mosque looks like that. The, so this is the mihrab or altar, but uh, in, in the actual underground. But still you would see that the desire to have a nice mosque is still here. They draw this uh, on the place of the altar. So they are trying to, uh, hoping that they will one day make a better mosque for themselves. These are the Malitoba Komnate, the makeshift uh, mosque or praying places. Uh, and this is the Good ending. Build yourself a house uh, in heaven by trying to by helping by helping to make new mosques in. Uh, this is mostly far from Moscow, of course. For Moscow uh, region, unfortunately, we have this because nobody wants mosques. No, no, no. That's 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 way. That's way. Okay. Thank you very much. Sorry.